Hello guys and welcome back to another video and as you can see my studio is almost finished you know the sound isn't still what it is supposed to be but I wanted to share it with you guys anyway now the background is going to change a little bit as well there's going to be some things in the background uh, to brighten the place up a little bit but today I got something different to talk to you about uh, because I have ordered Starlink and it's been delivered right so um, yes yeah, it's, it's it's really awesome and I wanted to share with you guys the unboxing and the first tests of Starlink so let's dive into it Now, before we dive into the video and before we dive into the unboxing and the first tests, I wanted to make it very clear to you guys that I don't need Starlink, right? I live in Belgium, densely populated area, so I do have fiber internet at my house from a regular service provider. And uh, the speeds that I'm getting there, or uh, I'm paying for gigabit speeds, but I'm actually reaching about 850 megabits per second, something like that, which is awesome, and a 50 megabits per second upload. Now for me, ordering Starlink was mainly just to test it, to try it out, to support SpaceX in their endeavors to get us to Mars, of course, but also just out of curiosity, right? I want to know what it is like, does it really work? Can I use it to stream, uh, yes or no, or is it shady in its internet connection when it's bad weather? That kind of stuff, that's what I want to test over the coming weeks and months. And who knows, maybe if it's good enough, by the end of the year, I will indeed kick out my regular service provider and Starlink could become my one and only internet connection. But we'll see about that. Now let's get you guys acquainted with Starlink and how easy it is to use, how easy it is to set up and how impressive the numbers are. Okay, so the idea is that uh, the dish will be on top of the garden house where also my little studio is housed now. So I can choose whether I go on my regular provider or I try to stream via Starlink, which is definitely something that I will do because come on, streaming video through space is just awesome, right? But I need to see whether that's possible because my house is right there and if the angle is too low, we'll see. So. For that, we uh, have an app and it's the Starlink app. And if you use that uh, Starlink app, then um, you have two options. You either have sign up, check for obstructions. So I'm going to check for obstructions. And then you need to tilt the phone up in my case. And then you see a nice arc going all the way over there. And there it basically stops. So that is where I get a straight line all the way up there. So that is the north side of the house. And uh, yeah, that has no coverage whatsoever. And if we look to the south side, yeah, so the full south side is a full 180 degrees. Right now I see that the uh, house is a little bit in the way, but if I stand here and I go all the way to where it is going to stay, excuse me, then I get full view over the house from here. So even from down here, it is uh, in full view. So that is good, especially when it's going to be mounted up the roof. So now that we have determined that up that roof will be okay, and we don't have anything on the north side in terms of coverage, um, Probably I will mount it, yeah, I will mount it anyway near the top of the roof. Uh, so it has coverage in the future in all directions, of course. But right now we're going to try on the ground and uh, yeah, let's see how easy it is to set up and how quick the internet speed is. So here we have Dishy and it should just slot in there. So, here we go, that's it, we just need to connect the cables and we're basically done. 
And yeah, so connecting the cables is also really easy. So you have the router, which has the white color. You have a white cable, right? You have the power brick with the power end and the power cord. And here it's also color coded. So you have the white cable goes into the white side. The gray cable from the dish goes into the gray side. And that's all we need to do to connect. So I'll just find some power brick here. There we go. There we go. So that is already hooked up. So the power is going to the device or should be going to the device. Yep, I see a little light. Just going to put it here to prevent some scratches. And we take the cable here and then we should start seeing the dish move. There we go. And now it's waiting just to boot. There we go. So it's orienting itself, searching for a connection. So right now I am connecting to Starlink and then I need to enter a Wi-Fi network, a Wi-Fi password, and I need to retype the password as well. I will be disconnected from the router and then I need to reconnect using the new password. Joining and then we'll see. In the meantime, it has reoriented itself. It's kind of pointing towards the northeast, which is a little bit strange because on the north there was no coverage, it said. So the first thing we want to do now is of course run a speed test. So it says we're connecting to Starlink. Go, it is connecting. We have 70, 160 I saw for a little while, 130, 140, 160, 170, 180, 190, 200, 240, 250. Wow. And upload is a little bit lower at 30, 35 maybe. Thirty-five point eight and a download of two hundred and fifty-one megabits per second. Um, I was guaranteed or promised that it would be either fifty between fifty and one hundred and fifty uh, megabits per second, and uh, with intermittent service, so it would still drop out um, occasionally or on several occasions. Um, yeah, two hundred and fifty uh, megabits. That's pretty good, that's awesome. It's just getting a little bit less than um, in, in upload than what I got from my internet provider. Now, if we take a look at the numbers that we got from the speed tests, and this was of course only the first test and one night in really good weather conditions. But we see that with starting, we get 342, 341, 275, 291. So let's say that's an average of about 300 megabits per second, but it fluctuates quite a bit. Now the upload is also around 30 uh, megabits per second, which is more than enough for streaming. If I want to stream, I need about five megabits per second per stream that I'm doing to stream in full HD. And uh, that's, that's what I'll be doing. So it's definitely usable for that. Now, if you compare that to my regular provider, which is still in it in uh, Flanders. Then I have 276, 281, 281, 281. It's very consistent there. And the upload speeds are also around 45 megabits per second and really consistent. So the consistency is still more or less an issue with Starlink, but that is to be expected. Of course, there are not a lot of satellites. As you saw earlier, I'm at the boundary of a cell. Uh, and at the boundary of the coverage at the moment, uh, I'm about the most up north you can get to get some really good coverage. Maybe the Netherlands would be feasible, but I'm not sure about that. But um, it's really awesome. I was not expecting this good 
of a speed, especially not at first, because as mentioned before again, Starlink, SpaceX, they told me 50 to 150 megabits per second with intermittent dropouts as well. And this is, yeah, double that and double the maximum that they are giving. So yeah, that's really awesome. And I'm really looking forward to do some more testing with this. I will be taking it on the move as well since I'm on the edge or close to the edge of a cell and of the reception. I want to see how far I can push it and where it will still work. I know it's not meant to be mobile at this moment, but hey, let's see. If it's possible, it's possible. If it's not, well, we don't expect it to work everywhere, of course. So yeah, I hope you guys like this video. Please give it a thumbs up then. And if you want to see more of this, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and make sure you click that little bell icon so you don't miss out on any new videos. And for now, thanks for watching. See you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.